Hey guys, Mix here, and in today's video, we are going to be getting something very, very exciting, something that we have all been looking forward to for quite a while now, and that is beginning to repaint the Corvette. So quick backstory for those of you that might be new, um, I have a 1974 Corvette and the paint on it is very bad, uh, clear coat damage all over the place, beginning to peel up, and I want to go get estimates for it to get painted, but since it is a fiberglass car, everyone was saying like ten dollars to $15,000, which is just way too much. I could buy like a whole new car with that money. So like most things on this channel, we're going to be doing it ourselves. So for those of you that saw last video, uh, you saw that we picked up some supplies at uh, Home Depot and Harbor Freight and all that, along with this nice new 27 gallon air compressor. But you guys didn't see this in last video. So this is just some of the stuff that I have been getting in the mail so far. Uh, I got lots of lots of rolls. I think it's 80 yards total of sandpaper. And then the rest is like the primers and I still have some more stuff on the way, but I'll talk to you guys about that once it uh, comes time to, you know, start priming it and filling it and all that. Today we are mostly just focusing on like prep work and uh, getting it all smooth. And then if there's any like pitting or anything that, any dips or anything, we can uh, try out the filler. As you guys know, I'm going to be starting off with just the T-top because I've never done anything like this ever. So I'm gonna practice with the T-top, see how it goes. If it takes a couple tries, then, you know, I won't be aggravated. I'm just gonna keep trying and learning along the way. But one thing I wanna do before that is set up this little work table real quick. So then I could just easily just put the T-top on there while it's off the car and then go at it. And I am just gonna sand it just on this little platform right outside of the shed. Because once I'm done uh, sanding both of the T-tops, I'm going to paint them in here. So I kind of want to keep this like my clean room in a way, because it probably will get a little bit dusty, even though it's probably not gonna be crazy because I'm not doing the whole car. I'm just doing two little T-tops first. I would like to keep it as clean as possible in here. Right now it's a little messy because I got a bunch of parts in the way, don't mind that. But I am gonna be putting up these clear sheets all along the walls and the ceiling and the door and then have the fan venting. So it's not really gonna matter much uh, that I do sand them out here. But once they are all smooth and done being sanded, I can bring them in there, surface clean them, and then begin just being very meticulous with how clean everything is because you want to be as clean as possible. So guys, that's enough rambling. Let's go ahead and uh, start setting up this real quick and then we can jump in to beginning the first steps of repainting the Corvette. I got this thing all uh, put together and she's sturdy. So what I'm gonna do right now is uh, get the T-top layer on here, see if I have to uh, adjust the chain at all. I think it should be fine. Maybe try and get it a little bit less, you know, rocky. And then we'll uh, start going at it. All right, so I got this thing all laid on here and uh, it's, eh, it's a little shaky, but that's all right. So, I mean, this T-top isn't like really, really in like terrible shape. Obviously it has like no clear coat on it whatsoever, but it does have like a bunch of tiny little scratches in it that we are gonna probably have to, once we sand it down, maybe just fill. We'll just have to see how bad it dips down like that. That's probably like the worst spot on this thing. But what I am gonna do uh, before I just go at it is I'm just gonna wipe it down for any, uh, you know, dirt or anything like that. Just so we are sanding on a somewhat clean surface. And then I'm just gonna start out with the uh, 120 grit and then that should take off somewhat of like the top uh, layer of paint. And then I'm just gonna work my way up slowly but surely, get this thing uh, smoother and smoother. Then if I have to put some filler on there, we'll put that on, let it dry, sand it down, and get it as smooth as we possibly can. Right, guys so this is after the third uh application or like say round of sandpaper on the t-top with the 120 grit i am going to go ahead and transition over to the 180 grip so it's not a huge step up but it is progression towards the higher grits like the 5 and 600 once we get closer to the priming time but if you guys remember that little chip that was in it right here 
you can see that it's somewhat smoother now. So basically, once it's time for me to start epoxying this, I am going to put just a dab of filler in there and then just kind of flatten it out. And then, like I said before, let it dry, sand. But the rest of it is honestly pretty clean. It looks like that there may have been some type of repair there in the past, but it is pretty smooth. But this thing is gonna get really smooth once we, work, once we start moving up in the grit. So with that being said, I'm just gonna move up to the 180 now and we'll see how it gets from there. doing my second uh, run through with the 360 grit and I didn't record all of me doing the 180 grit just because it probably wasn't that entertaining to watch but throughout there we obviously it went from basically all white to back down to a dark blue and it is pretty smooth right now but right now I am just going to uh, use the blow gun and just blow it off quick get all the uh, stuff out of there and just wipe it down so I can really feel how uh, smooth it is and then I'll probably end up running through it again, through the grits, and then end up at like 600 until it's like as smooth as I possibly could get it, and there'll be time for primer. Alrighty, so I just finished uh, blowing it off and basically we're just wiping it down, and it is pretty dank smooth. It's pretty close to uh, what I want it to be at. But I do have to wrap it up there for today. Tomorrow I'll probably just go back at it, and I'll probably catch back to you guys once I make some improvement with the smoothness. So with that being said, I'll catch you all tomorrow. Alrighty guys, so we are back here the next day, and as you can see, I already have on my outfit and my mask and everything. And that's because I actually already went ahead and uh, started. I just went through uh, once again with the 360 grit. And that was my last pass, I believe, of doing the 360. Now I'm going to jump all the way up to 600 because it is pretty dang smooth right now. Yesterday after I finished, I went back and looked at the footage and tried to see areas that I may have been missing. And I saw I was kind of missing over here a little bit and a little bit in the corner, so I made sure and I hit that. I have been doing a good bit of sanding off camera just because it probably isn't that entertaining to watch. And being that this is just the first steps, I don't want to bore you guys at all. But what I am going to go ahead and do right now is jump up to the 600 like I just said before. And what I am actually going to do is do the other T-top as well. So I am still waiting for the epoxy primer to arrive. But I figured instead of mixing it up over and over again, I'm just gonna crank out both sides of the T-tops because I feel like it's gonna come out okay. <laughs> That's just my hopes. But once I run through this thing with the 600, then I'm gonna go grab the other one and uh, begin basically the same steps with that one. All right, so let's hit it with the 600 right now. So it might not look different, but we just finished doing the 600 grit. And like I just said before, it probably doesn't look much different, but feel wise, it is much smoother, a lot less, you know, coarse and rough. But what I'd like to do is kind of just like a fingernail test and just kind of like run it across like the areas and just kind of feel for any like marks that might need just a smidge of filler. Like this little thing right here might need it. Like I can feel it just barely. This is definitely going to need it right in the middle. You can see how my finger might get like caught up. Yeah, right there. If you guys have seen like other body working videos, you would see like blotches like this kind of everywhere and I'm kind of just going to add new ones that are just going to fill these little tiny cracks and little imperfections in the T-top. But right now I'm probably just going to rub it off with some surface cleaner and like some alcohol just to get like a final look at it. And if everything looks good, then I'll probably get out the other T-top and uh, start with that one. That is smooth. Once I prime it, I'll be able to see like any imperfections that I might not be able to feel. And then I could sand it from the primer, patch it if I have to, if it's that big. And then on top of the epoxy primer, which is like the first one, then there's gonna be the 2K stuff that I was talking about before, which is pretty thick stuff. And as long as we get the epoxy primer good, then the 2K should be pretty uh, dang flat if we could spray pretty good. So 
So basically the same process as before, I'm just gonna wipe this down, start with the 120 and work my way up. And if uh, time allows for today, I'm gonna start filling on both of the T-tops because, I mean, they're both in similar condition. This one might have a couple more deep gashes in it, as you can see there and there and here a little bit. But the rest of it, I mean, is pretty gashless. <laughs> but we'll just see how it comes out. So it is actually a couple hours later from where uh, we last left off and last time you guys saw me just beginning the 180 grit and I just finished up doing the 600 grit so I've been out here just kind of going at it and I definitely think that I did this one a little bit better than the other one. I'm definitely not going through sandpaper as fast because I think before I was pushing down way too hard and I kind of figured out a pattern that I do uh, that kind of works well with the sandpaper on like the little curves and everything. So slowly but surely I am learning along the way. So as we go on, it should just get better and better. But I do want to epoxy them in this video. So I am gonna wait until they come in the mail. They should be in the mail either tomorrow or the day after. I think the latest the day after, so definitely shouldn't be too long of a wait, but then that's when we can test out the spray gun and I can learn how to mix things. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but I bought mixing cups, so we'll figure it out. I'll watch a YouTube video. This is a DIY paint job. Anyway guys, with that being said, I will catch you all back once the primer arrives. So guys, we are back here two days later and the primer came in the mail. So today we're gonna be testing out the air compressor, the paint gun, my mixing abilities, my spray painting abilities, my filler abilities. It's gonna be a day of learning and testing and hopefully not screwing up too bad. But what I wanna do right now is uh, get out the T-tops, uh, get out the filler, start mixing the filler. I don't need a lot, so I'm probably just gonna put in a little tiny little pan or something. Mix it up and then just fill the little spots. Let it dry, it only needs about 20 minutes until I can sand it. But I might let it go a little bit longer because it is not 70 degrees out, which is like ideal, it's like 50 something. But once I get the little gashes in the T-top uh, all smoothened out and filled, but while I'm letting the filler dry, what I wanna do is uh, begin taking everything out of the shed that obviously doesn't have to be in here and begin putting up the plastic sheets on the walls, maybe even the floor too and get this place as clean as possible. So I'm gonna pull out the NASCAR, pull out everything I don't need, uh, sweep it out, and then like I said before, put up all these sheets and everything and get it all ready to go in here. So what I'm gonna do right now is take out the stands, uh, get the T-tops, get them out here and ready to go, and then start getting to work. All right, so I got one of the T-tops on uh, the stands, and what I've actually seen is people mix the filler like on a piece of paper and then just tape it to like what they're filling. So that's what I'm just gonna do right now because I don't need a lot of it. And then what I'm also gonna do is tape off the trim because I'm gonna have to do that when I prime it anyway, but I might as well just do it now. And basically same step for the other one. Slight predicament, not a huge deal, just kind of more of an upsetting problem. So as I was uh, applying all the body filler, I began to realize that I used way too much and well, I wasted all of that because it is now rock solid, which is just great. So as you can see, I am now using a fraction of that size, if even if that, because this stuff dries real quick. That's for sure. So what I probably should have done is had this one already prepped so I could just swap them out real quick, but that wasn't the case, but we live and learn. So I just gotta stir up a quick batch quick again and then begin filling this one. But as you can see, uh, this prep work came out pretty nice. Definitely shouldn't get anything on the trim, so that's good.
Because as you can see, I have my outfit on and everything, and I have uh, one of the T-tops on here, so I'm going to begin sanding it. I have the door shut to here right now, because as you guys just saw, I just put up uh, most of the plastic sheets. I just have the one to put right where the door is, and I just got to cut out a little thing for the fan. But I'm just going to go ahead and just crank out both T-tops real quick, sand them down, get them all nice and smooth, clean them off, and then uh, it'll be time to start setting everything up inside, like the T-tops and everything, start mixing the primer, and lay down the first uh, coat, or lay down the first spray of anything I've ever done <laughs> onto these T-tops. I already set up the spray gun with the spray gun filter. I filled up the compressor, so we're all good there. So I'll catch you guys back once these T-tops are all ready to go. All right, guys, so I just finished up uh, sanding off and cleaning uh, the T-tops, and they look pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do right now is mix up the paint behind the, the little sheet. I'm not going to record it because it's too tight back there, and I just want to focus because I've really never done this before. But I want to make sure that I can clean myself as good as possible, keep everything as clean as I can, and then we'll just go at it and lay down some primer. But before we go ahead and just spray over these, I just want to show you guys like how good uh, some of the like patches and everything came out. Like that is so smooth. You really just can't even tell. Like even though I had a big area, when it sanded it down, it was almost like silicone in a way and it just went into anything that was just deeper than the surface itself and just filled it right in. So I'm definitely really happy how it all came out. Okay, I just mixed it up. I really don't know how much I'm supposed to use, but I figured this would be plenty, maybe, hopefully. I don't know, we'll see. And now I'm gonna pour this into the gun and hopefully no leaks and then we'll just start spraying. Here goes nothing. Oh boy. It says to clear out the gun with uh, hot, soapy water after every use, so I'm just going to do that quick. I'm just going to spray it into the walls. This is just taking forever. Alright, uh, that should be good. Probably not. Well, I gotta go clean up about half of the uh, primer I spilled on the floor. They really don't make it easy to pour. The first coat is done. I did it a little bit too light, but I'll tell you why in a sec. But I just want to give you guys a closer look. It is honestly spotless. I really don't know if you guys can hear me or not. This respirator is muffling my voice, but... It's honestly spotless, but this one's looking pretty good as well. Honestly, I thought there would be more like dots in it and everything, but it's pretty, you know, flat. But I had a little bit of an issue with the uh, spray gun, which I'm going to go outside and tell you guys. Alrighty guys, so don't mind the marks on my face, but the spray gun, I... The, I thought the spray, like the span of it, the fan of it, is was going to be way wider, but it was almost like a spray paint can. Like, it was just going, like, narrow as possible. I tried messing with the settings, but I really couldn't get anything to work. I definitely could have gone, like, one coat only if I had figured it out. But I ran out of paint, and when I was mixing it back there, they really got to make it easier to pour. So, for the gallon of primer, like the big circle one, I was using a little tiny cup and pouring it little by little into them. But for the catalyst, because it's a two-part primer, oh my god. It has a little tiny hole in it, and it's like a joke, so I thought maybe it'd be easier to pour. I go to dump it. She's running along the side, all over the floor. And it's really comforting when it just says, highly flammable, right on it. So I just let her soak into the wood a little bit, and then I came back and washed her up. But I gotta figure out an easier way to pour it, because it's like to the brim full and just when you tilt it over she just dumps all over the side so i definitely got to figure out an easier way to do that i'm sure there's some type of trick out there honestly that was the hardest part of it just pouring it in there was so difficult but other than that i am pretty dang happy how they look so i'm gonna let that dry for a while and then i'll do the second coat and in the meantime while it's drying i'm gonna try and figure out a way to uh, make the fan on the spray gun a lot wider i've been messing around with the gun and I figured out why it wasn't spraying like how it should have been and it is because the tip with the two prongs there and there was facing at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock instead of how it is now 
and that's why I wasn't doing the fan, and I just kind of tested it on this plywood with just like some water so I could kind of see, and when I rotated it like this, it was perfect, and then I was watching some videos on how to like dial in everything, so now it should be good, but what I'm really upset about is I should have stopped when I saw that it was spraying narrow, because now we're definitely gonna have runs which is a little upsetting but I also need to keep in mind after the second coat I'm probably gonna do a 1200 grit sandpaper over it to smoothen everything out and with the second coat I should be able to get you know everything final and ready to go for the 2k high build primer and that stuff will go over it so as long as I put down the second coat and then once I sand it get everything nice and smooth with the very very high grit sandpaper I don't think we should have to worry at all but you could also do one coat with this, and I think if I had the fan how it should have been, then I think I definitely could have just gotten one uh, coat done instead of now mixing another one and doing the whole process over again. But learn along the way. I'm not really that angry about it. At least I figured it out, and it should be much better next time. So it's about 45 minutes later. Uh, it actually said 30 minutes until you can do the uh, second coat. So by the time I mix everything, it'll probably be like an hour anyway. But that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to mix it up. Same amount as last time. I basically got it perfect. Honestly, I could probably do a little bit less, being that I have the fan figured out now. But I'll probably just do the same just to be safe. And yeah, let's go ahead and uh, crank out the second coat. So guys, the second coat is now done and it looks awesome. I'm definitely extremely impressed with how good this actually looks. Now keep in mind, this is just primer. I, it, obviously, you can still kind of somewhat see like the filler and everything, which I did hear that that type of filler will do. You'll still be able to see it. And this is the primer and there's still a whole nother thick primer going on top of this and then base coat, clear coat, everything. So, so far, this is looking really, really good. I'm surprised how clean I was able to keep it. Like, there are, like, zero dust particles in this thing. It is honestly impressive. But the only bad thing that happened was, since I couldn't figure out the whole fan thing, which is now fixed, I do have a slight run. You can see it right there in this T-top. But like I said before, that should just be able to sand right out. This does say to wait two to three days before sanding. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lock up everything, keep it nice and clean in here, and just let it cure and do its thing. So guys, with that being said, I'm gonna be ending off the video here. I'll catch you guys back in a couple days when we uh, sand it and prep it for 2K high build primer, and then it starts getting exciting. We start getting some color in here. Like I've been saying, this is definitely going to be a learning curve, but I'm super excited. I've never done anything like this, so. This is like a whole new ball field for me, so I'm definitely really excited until we can start getting this all colored up and everything. But follow my social medias, they'll be on the outro of this video, Instagram and Snapchat I use the most. But thanks for watching, please subscribe, like, comment, tag friends with the channel.